So now, if they play something, their weakest ally takes three with the Roiling Sands. Ooh, Ground Slam good. Ground Slam, stop Poppy, that's good. Wasn't me. And welcome, everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Zareth Talia first deck of the day. We got day two playing Beyond the Bandlewood, the new Bandle City expansion. Uh, very excited about all of these champions. So we're going to try out some new ones that we didn't play yesterday. First up, we got Zareth this Ascended Champion, and we have a couple of different decks that we're going to be playing with Xerath uh, in the coming days. Xerath's going to be a, a popular champion that people are asking for with donation decks. We're going to have Xerath Azir, Xerath Swain, Xerath Zillion. So we've got some more Xerath coming up. But we're going to be starting with Xerath Talia, and really wanted to show off Herald of the Mages. This card looks really, really good. 5 mana, 4-4. Four, four. When I'm summoned, if you have destroyed 4-plus allied landmarks this game, which that's obviously what we're going to be, our deck's going to be designed to do. Grant your champions everywhere, plus two, plus two, and overwhelm. And that's perfect with Talia, right? Because when you have, like, leveled up Talia attacking, it has this ridiculous ability, but they can just throw a blocker in and they don't, they take, you know, minimal damage to their nexus. But giving Talia plus two and overwhelm, making it six power overwhelm to go along with this six damage to begin with, basically means it's 12 uh, 12 damage overwhelm attacker. Pretty, pretty silly. So I want to kind of combine those two together. Um, let's see, we're going to have Waste Walker, which is going to be a very large overwhelm. We're going to have Salt Spire that if, you know, like if we have like Talia, maybe copies like a Salt Spire, um, but then we, we play Herald that gives the Talia plus two, plus two. So the Talia will be five power, like it'd be a five, seven. So it'll be the largest thing. So then whenever Salt Bear, the Salt Spire comes through, Grant the strongest ally plus two plus two. That could be another plus two plus two on the Talia if it's the largest thing. Playing Ancient Hourglass in here, I think that this could be a really good way to protect our champions, but then also it's a good countdown landmark to be destroyed to help out Xerath. So I think that that could just like pair really well with Xerath because of course Xerath will want to destroy our landmarks and then start dealing three to the each enemy, like to the weakest enemy each time we destroy a landmark. Playing all the Unraveled Earths. Rock hoppers, all sorts of landmarks that can be destroyed pretty easily. So let's go and get to it. Enough about the deck. Let's, uh, you know, that's the introduction of the deck. Let's go ahead and play five games here in ranked with Xerath Zillion. Okay, Draven Scion. I wonder if this is my version of Draven Scion. Somebody saw my YouTube video from this morning with the deck from yesterday that looked awesome. Currently have no landmarks. Um, I'm gonna send all these back. I could keep that waste walker, I guess, but we really need landmarks. All right, so not the best looking hand. I'm thinking ground slam could be really good to have against Draven. Draven, of course, a card that's always a problem. Yeah, Scion's real good. There we go, blue. So they discarded an urchin. That is not advisable. I don't think I'd ever advise anybody to destroy an urchin. To discard an urchin, sorry. Now we're cooking. Okay, not too bad for how life could be right now. I'm going to go Unraveled Earth and Waste Walker. Oh. 
Okay, so not my list. I did not have that card. Not have that card either. Alright, ground slam there. Kinda take too much damage, so I guess we have to block here. Down to three. So they've, they've definitely taken a very, very aggressive line. Um, just in general. Good card. They've gotten through our Unraveled Earths fairly well. They don't have any cards left. Death is transient, as long as the body holds blood. Ah, uh, that card's always great. Lost Souls is so good. You could do. Lady. This is why we want Talia to have that Overwhelm. Alright, so of course we're going to have to use a Ground Slam right there. The Ground Slam is going to cost 4 mana, that means I only have 4 other mana left. So I think I just go ahead and pass. Because if they pass back then I don't even have to cast the Ground Slam. They use a removal spell like a Whirling Death or something like that. Oh. Well, they just have that. Alright, well. I'm just gonna save Ancient Hourglass to protect Talia. Well, GG, Scion. Good game. Just need one more early blocker. Okay, better hand. So not exactly sure what they're going to be doing here with Freljord PNZ. There's a lot of different options. Could be Poros. That's probably like the, the number one option, but there's a lot of different options. There's Yetis. There's... Okay. Yep. Looks like Poros. Looks like Poros. I'm going to go ahead and play Chip so that I can play Rock Hoppa. The next round. The thing is, is like trading my 3 1 for that little 1 1, while not looking good right now, could end up being a good trade after some Poro snacks. No chomps. So I'm going to draw the card first before predicting, so I have more information of what uh, we need slash are looking for, and I want this ground slam. I'm going to go ahead and slow them down. Whoa. That's got to be a bug, right? Huh. That looks like a bug. Uh, let's see. Gonna catch the sky. Okay, I'm gonna challenge like this because I want... I kind of need to clear a spot up on my board. Right, because we go Salt Spire next round, then Talia copy Salt Spire. That's three spots. I guess the... Pre well, the Preservarium's gonna go away. Okay, maybe I didn't need to do that. Yep, there's their snacks. Well, like I said, like... Trading that 3-1 for these things, like, after they eat some snacks, is really not that bad of a deal. But unfortunately, the Salt Spire is going to be...
coming down before I get to Preservarium. Or before, sorry, so sorry, before I get to Herald. So, like, the Talia is not going to be getting the plus two, plus two buffs. Um. Yeah. I'm cheap. Alright, so they've set... They spent a lot of mana, like, just setting everything up. They're really setting things up. If I open attack, they can only block like Talia that's attacking for 10 and taking the rest, but they could just have like a frostbite spell. I, I think I do this before attacking. It, it does allows them to play a blocker, but Talia has the overwhelm now. We also have an additional attacker with this additional 4 4. And the Shapestone looking a little better now. We'll have to draw Zareth one of these games, right? Xerath would be pretty cool to have. I'll have to try drawing one of those. I wouldn't want to be in your shoes either. Even though her shoes are right over here. Isn't this Talia? Whoa, Poros lid. Yep. That's a lot of overwhelm. That's really hard to stay alive. GG's. Okay, so Draven Scion again, this time with Shadow Isles. So they're going spooky. We've got to be pretty aggressive, and again, we have our Unravel Durst, but not any early blockers. I guess I'm actually just going to send them all back. Where's the early blockers? Okay, we have a cool Xerath this time. So we'll have Rock Hopper Ground Slam Xerath. Chip. So Chip fits the curve well, but unfortunately, that means that we we are not going to be able to have Ground Slam on three, right? Because we need the one spell mana from round two to have it on three. Fresh catch. Well, it was fresh. Sands beneath me and winds behind me. Me. Okay. Out of my way. Oh, so trade two for two. And we're left with just an additional card in hand than them, but they have the two one in play. Me too, kiddo. Me too. And the ground slam is perfect against Draven. Yeah, Unless they have um, survival skills, then not so perfect. That does mean that I'm not going to have the mana for Salt Spire this round. Really wanted to play Salt Spire this round. All right, champion spell is destroy an allied landmark or one of your mana gems, deal four to an enemy unit. So this will not, if we destroy this, we do not get the grumpy rock bear, as far as I know. Sure is dark, eh? There's a one cost card. Down to nine. That's Talia. Raven, I love you. Me too, kiddo. Me too. So basically you're gonna have Talia copy the the ancient preparations. Who'll be our fifth landmark. It'll just be another landmark that can be destroyed.
Why is this slow speed? Yeah, every Shurima removal spell. Why is this slow speed? So it seems like we need more... At least, you know, if we're going to be playing against these aggro decks, you know, like, I need more, like, blue sentinel. Right, like... Like, I have two blue sentinel, three of these heralds, and it's looking like maybe it should be switched. Maybe we should just have two of these heralds and three of the blue sentinels. That's, like, a card that... You know, like, we, we just haven't had stuff to play like we've our our curve's been kind of yucky here we've had a lot of four and five mana cards in these games that we're losing but we have 15 total four and five mana cards Nothing only 10 twos yeah, i think i think that's a change we need to make i think we need a third blue sentinel and two herald For the money makers. I won't. Beware falling rocks. Uh, yeah, okay. Looking good until that Scion. Yep. I was looking good until that card. So of course this is ephemeral also, so it's gonna die, so they'll get the Scion return and and uh rally. GG's. So pretty poor hand for us again. Okay, so we're making one change to our deck. We're going to take out the Shape Stones, because they've seemed like they haven't really mattered. And we're getting another Ancient Preparations and another Blue Sentinel. Because we, like, these aggro matches that we've lost, we just haven't had any early bodies. We've had, like, all just expensive stuff. Um, and, like, the Shape Stones don't really help keep you from dying. And I, I want to keep Ancient Hourglass because of how Ancient Hourglass works with Xerath. So I'd rather keep that than the Shape Stones. So Shape Stones are gone. Getting a third preparations, third at Blue Sentinel, and hopefully, you know, with that, we should have some more blockers, and that's what we needed. Why not that three cost deal four spell? I don't know exactly what card that is. I mean, deal four for three is good. I said, I don't know what that card is. Uh, Caitlyn Timo. Okay. So we do not want Preservarium. And I'm going to send the Talias back because they cost 5 mana. Caitlyn Timo, we should be drawing more cards. We want a lot of our cheap stuff. Yeah, we have Ground Slam. Like, Ground Slam's awesome. Is that what we're talking about? If it's made of sand, I can ride it. Puff Cat Puff. Very good card. All right, let's get this Waste Walker in play right away. Let's see what this card can do. It's difficult to decide between Waste Walker and Merciless Hunter. Wanted to try out Waste Walker with it, you know, being first week trying out new stuff and everything like that. The easy play is to have the Waste Walker challenge the 2-2, but then if we do that, then my Waste Walker isn't blocking the Puff Cap Pup. Or then they're going to use Mystic Shot, which maybe they're you know, looking at that Mystic Shot. Hey Yix, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try some Tristana Poppy today. Oh, if mushrooms could talk. Last Tinashrame buys me a new sail. There's the Mystic Shot. Oh, 
Purple Berry Shake. Okay. Good card. I was worried about playing the Ground Slam on the Peddler because of Freljord having such good ways to protect, oh dear. you know, Elixir of Iron, anything like that, Troll Chant. The card is Right of the Arcane. Three mana slow spell, slow yuck. Destroy now. Oh yeah, because we have to destroy a landmark. I don't. I don't want that card. When I'm summoned or attack, create a fleeting poison dart in hand. That card's really good. That's a three five for four. That card's very good. Well, we're gonna take some damage here. But this is my best play for just a, a variety of reasons of like getting the plus two plus. You know, getting like the four landmarks for the salt spires. This will give me, you know, two. Like the the nine eight and the five four, next round, will allow me to also play one landmark and have Talia leveled up. Where was I? So no, I, I don't think that the Ride of the Arcane has much synergy with this deck. I don't want to destroy Salt Spires. I don't want to destroy Preservariums. Like these, these are cards that I want to count down and just destroy themselves. I, I don't want a card to destroy my own landmark. I, I don't want that. All right, let's go and predict. Yeah, like he wouldn't take out Ground Slam for right. It'd be like, would you play right over anything else? Is like the question. And I don't want it. It's just so hard to kill any of those things. Which maybe I just shouldn't have even tried to kill Peddler. I guess I guess that's really the thing with me having the other ground slam discarded. I just shouldn't should not have even tried. Because we need it for like Caitlyn and Teemo and those things attacking. Oh, they found me. Alright, activate all of them. So I have four pup. Wait, does it? So that shuffles the deck then, right? We we learned that last time, right? Because it says activate the effects of the of the traps in the top five cards of the enemy deck. Because last time, whenever we had this, it was like zero, and then we started drawing traps immediately afterwards. So yeah, it's got to shuffle the deck. Man, I don't want to play Preservarium, but I also do want to play Preservarium because they don't do anything. What would I want to draw? I just want to draw another attacker, basically. All rocks erode eventually. What? I'm gonna replace the Preservarium with the Rock Hopper. This does not remove the traps from. I think it, it just activates the, the traps in the top five, and then they like get shuffled or something like that. But it doesn't oh it doesn't remove the traps from the cards, even though it activates them. They still get activated again when you draw. Oh. 
I really, really wish we would have drawn this this thing last round instead of the 3-1, right? Like, this card would have been awesome. It would have been a 5-5 five, five, instead of dying to, like, Static Shock and stuff like that. Careful now. Why Why are we saying that Xerath is bad? I am not de I'm not declaring Xerath is bad after one day at all. We've... Right where I want you. Not one bit. I've always been a fun guy. I've only drawn Xerath in one game so far out of the four. Alright, that should be game over. Yeah, that's game over. Yeah, you're saying that should have ground slammed before attacking. We still would have lost. If I would have done that and this thing. But you know, just doing just doing stuff like that, like they could just play more blockers, everything like that. All right, so Tristana Poppy. All right, we got a Zareth, and we have um, a couple of earlier things. We can keep this. No, we didn't have a chance last game. No, the game was over. So, so far, you know, like, I'm 1-3. in three. We lost twice to two aggressive decks where I had some very poor hands against aggressive decks, and I, I changed the deck afterwards to be better against aggressive decks. You know, adding another copy of this Ancient Preparations Blue Sentinel. It's also, in, it's also very likely that Merciless Hunter would be better to be playing than Waste Walker. So it's not that I'm. Again, we're we're in the learning sp spots of, of just gameplay and, and how everything works and everything like that. So just because I'm one and three, doesn't mean that, like this deck has no chance going forward, right? Like we're we're trying stuff out. Doesn't mean that Zareth is unplayable and. This is only the second game that we've ever, that we've even drawn as Aerith. Ideally, you want to be you know have like your leveled up Aerith coming in and and just doing three damage to everything. Like that's that's really what you want. It's not really like a play at round four kind of champion, be, uh, unless you're going to have like some landmarks about to be destroyed because it's not the best like attacking and blocking immediately. Would you look at this place? I should play the other blue sentinel. But this is fine. So next round I have six mana. I guess I should have blocked that with a three one. Because then Zer with Zareth. Yeah, and JJ brings up a good point that, like, all landmark cards have, didn't look great immediately. They took some time. That's a good point. Pokestick's been pretty good. Alright, so this will help level up Zareth. So now, if they play something, their weakest ally takes three with the Roiling Sands. Ooh, ground slam good. Ground slam stop poppy, that's good. Wasn't like me. I don't know what happened right there. Ow. 
And y'all are saying that Xerath isn't any good. It just killed a champion. Immediately. When, I, when it was played. So this is the best this Waste Walker has looked so far. As far as comparing Waste Walker to Merciless Hunter. But then again, the one in hand, you're like, well, can we... Can that one turn into... A Merciless Hunter, please? Shreema can't deal with elusives? Are, are you playing three copies of... Like, Shreema has one of the best cards in the game against elusives with, with Quicksand. Are you playing three copies of Quicksand? You don't have, like, that many other good options. You know, like, the rest of the options are, like, super expensive and, like, not fantastic. But Quicksand, one of the best options in the game. I would have liked to play the Unraveled Earth, but I didn't have, don't really have the room. This card is awesome, Terror of the, Tenor of the Terror. Yes, more Unraveled Earth. Get him, Xerath. Why can't I have priority first? Yeah, Spear of Fire is super expensive. That one not quite as good, but quicksand super good. This requires my largest official act. Go ahead, play some. Do it. It'll be a good idea to play something. Cause see, they're, they're like stuck, right? Like, what are they supposed to do? They play something, it dies. If they don't play anything, I have like this nine nine and five five, and I got Dubs Ground Slam. All right, so that's gonna give all their allies plus four, plus four this round, which is a lot, admittedly. That's a lot. Um... There's just two of them. If they leave you, they can be broken. So this way we go to 10. This way we go to 10. Kind of don't really mind if their things cost one less. I'll just get rid of the impact card. And I'll go to 10. But why? And are they going to play something or... Nah. <laughs> They can't, yeah. They're just stuck. Can't do anything. Alright, so that last game, our, our deck definitely looked better uh, against, you know, again, against an aggressive deck where we had that extra ancient preparation, that extra blue sentinel. I think that was a good change that we made after the first two games. And so I kind of wish we could have played those first two games again and like seen if we could have gotten like that one extra blocker, right? Cause like our first loss, all we needed was one extra blocker. Like we basically ran them out of cards. They just had that one extra attacker to put me down to three and then get excited to kill me. And so I, I think this list would have, I think we would have won the first game with this list. And so then we would have been three and two. The second game, I'm still not sure, but you know, we didn't have good mulligans, especially that second aggro game. Uh, you know, then, then there's the Caitlyn Teemo, and again, didn't really have a very good mulligan. Waited a while before we started doing stuff, and just too long. And they had one Puff Cat Peddler that took over. So yeah, I think there's still, I think there's definitely good stuff going on here. I could see playing maybe a third Quicksand, but maybe not. But Waste Walker or Merciless Hunter, I'm not sure. I'm going with Waste Walker here. The other option, of course, in these regions is the four mana card, the three five. That's good at blocking this Earth Elemental. And with like Malphite decks in the past, we played Earth Elemental. But now that we have Xerath also in the four mana slot to go along with Salt Spire, I basically took like Earth Elemental, turned it into Waste Walker. So just have a lower curve than what a lot of the, uh, like than what we had before with Malphite, uh, Malphite and Talia. Because like basically Malphite goes down to four mana, turns into Xerath. 
Then we have, uh, you know, this Earth Elemental go from four to three to just turn into Wastewalker. And then we had the six mana card from before, Stonebreaker, reduce that by one mana cost to turn into Herald. So I like that we're reducing the mana cost on those. But still, what we struggled with was, again, having early attackers and blockers that and just bodies early in the game. That's what I struggled with. And so I think having two Blue Sentinel and two Ancient Preparations in those first few games was a mistake. So get three of both of those, and the deck definitely looked better. All right, so there we go. That's Zeratali, their first try at that. Um, give it a try also. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, let me know what you think of Zareth. How does this deck work for you with this you know, this updated list here? How does it work for you? And uh, I'd be really interested to hear about that. How, you, how are you liking Zareth to go along with Talia and giving them overwhelm with the Herald? What do you think about Wastewalker versus Merciless Hunter? And uh, that's kind of about it. All right, but that's going to be it for this deck. So as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.